every one of us is losing something special to us. Lost opportunities, lost possibilities, feelings we can never get back again. That's part of what it means to be alive. Have a very wonderful evening, everyone. Please let me know if the sound works nice, if you could watch the intro without problems. I'm gonna switch on my camera now. Hello, hello. Good evening to everyone who has hopped on the live stream tonight. I hope you're doing good. I hope you could start your weekend right off, that you are enjoying good health and that everything in your life goes as expected. So for those who are online, who are locked in, please uh, use the chat. I'm going to reply to as many questions as possible. And of course, please use the chat to talk to each other. We have some Haruki Murakami fans from all over the world here. So feel free to chat with each other. This is not only a one man show, this is for everyone. So, good to read that everything works. Thank you very much. And thank you for the kind words. Uh, it was a short intro I have put together uh, for the release of the new book of Murakami, which is the main subject tonight. So, I think this is everything uh, we can or we want to talk about right now because these were very huge news we had in the past weeks. So, the first book since 2017, since Killing Commendatore. And as you have seen in the title, today's topic is The City and Its Uncertain Walls. So before we start with the main topic, let's just have a little small talk. Let me know where you guys are from. I'm really interested to find out from which corner of the world you have locked in tonight. I will also share some news with you 
Um, it was a little bit calm on this channel in the past weeks, but when spring comes, the mood is going just right up. Creativity starts to emerge and uh, there are many things we can talk about tonight. So just let me know how you all feel, where you are from. What you're currently reading is also very interesting to know. Maybe let me know if it's the first time you are watching the live stream. Really interested to find out. But um, as long as you use the chat, I can show you something I have just got today because last week was my birthday. And thanks to a very close friend of me, I got a very nice present, which is in German, Tanz mit dem Schafsmann, but the original title is Dance, Dance, Dance. And this is uh, one of the few books I haven't read. So I'm really, really, really stoked. And at this point, thank you again to my dear friend who has gave me this book. Such a beautiful present. I'm still flattered. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Greetings from England. Hello to England. Also from Germany. Liz, hello. And joining from Sweden. Hello. Nice to see you all. What are you currently reading? Is there any current Murakami book that you are reading? Let me know. And in the meantime, I will show you something new. Um, I have shared this on Instagram uh, yesterday. So I have the huge privilege of translating a book. It's the first time that I'm translating a whole book. And this is a book that um, many Murakami fans should enjoy because it is written by a huge Murakami fan. And I think some of you might know him. I'm talking of A.G. McDonald because he has a very cool YouTube channel and he has been sharing some very interesting Kafka on the Shore videos in the past and also about Kales Tsukuru Tazaki. And he was also part of the documentary, so the documentary that I have uploaded last year. So if you remember, there was a short part with an interview and A.G. was the one I have interviewed. But A.G. is not only a very cool YouTuber, he is also a novelist. And he has wrote the book Red River. There you go. Red River is the first part of a trilogy. And in A.G.'s own words, this is something like a rural nightmare. And it mixes a lot of, you know, let's say nightmare, horror and crime elements. Weird stuff. So this is already out on Amazon in English. So anyone who is interested in reading something that a Harukist um, recommends to other Harukists and that is written by a Murakami fan, just purchase the book. I have gone through the first pages and it is simply creative in so many ways. I won't spoil anything. And for those who read in German, you got to wait for my translation, which will need a certain time. But uh, yeah, this is really exciting. I'm really stoked how this turns out. First time with you, Germany here. Wunderschönen guten Abend. Please shout out my girlfriend Paula. She loves this guy's books. She's watching now. Okay, hello Paula. Uh, hope you're enjoying the stream. And also Emphora. Very nice of you to uh, use this chat for a shout out. I hope you're enjoying the stream. Have fun. Great cover also. Definitely. I mean, look at it. it. It just has this vibe. So as far as I know, Red River is a, uh, a moody or small town in the state of Victoria in Australia. And AG himself is from Australia. From Australia. So um, I guess the uh, descriptions of the nature and the surroundings will be very precise, let's say. But of course, as long as we are not there, we need to imagine. But from the excerpt that I have read, um, it is very creative. Yeah. Hello, this is Paula, loving the stream. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Nice to have you here. Great to see you live. Thank you and great to have you here. 
Uh, this is the fourth live stream now. I've been trying this uh, for the first time in January. So, and I think it is quite a cool stuff because you can just start into the weekend by talking to other uh, Murakami fans. Um, I'm not a professional host or anything. I just enjoy talking to you guys. And uh, it's it's something you can just uh, you can just drift into the weekend and let go of stress and everything else that is surrounding you. you know, talking about books is something I could do for nights. And if I can share this with you, this is, of course, more than beautiful. Okay. So what are you guys reading at the moment? Let me know. I have just um, read something interesting tonight. Not tonight, today, sorry. Um, so Murakami hasn't been in Japan for the release of his new book, uh, which was last week on April 13. Um, he's currently in the US and he's very close to Boston because he has been on a uh, event, I think, something like an award. I'm not sure it was the Boston University, but he is in Boston. And one fan shared the theory or is thinking that because Murakami is an uh, avid runner and he used to runs a lot in his free time, that he maybe takes part at the Boston Marathon, which is uh, very close. So if anyone anyone from Boston is watching, keep your eyes open. Maybe you will see the world's greatest novelist in front of you. Something really, really interesting. All right. I'd say we can just start right off with the new book, The City and its Uncertain Worlds. So what we already know is that it is out in Japan. It has been announced on 1st February, so quite close, uh, quite close to the release date. It is the first book since 2017. And most of the Japanese readers, I've talked to some, uh, to some uh, friends online that have already finished the book. And um, most of them are very, very satisfied. A major part loves the book. Um, it says that the narration style is quite light. It is easy to read. But still, the pacing is let's say extensive this is what i got from them so this is the things that have that they have uh, told me um it is based on a short story he has written in 1980 so more than 40 years ago and this story was uh, featured in a magazine in a literature magazine back in the 80s and this magazine's name was i'm not sure if it's still active but way back then this magazine uh, was named Bunga Kukai, which is a Japanese literature magazine. And this was quite shortly after the career of Murakami has started. So he hasn't been that active by that time. And in his own words, because he gave an, uh, he gave an interview just uh, uh, shortly after the release, he says that this story um, didn't leave him for years. And he had the inner urge to complete it, to finish it. And actually, the, the short story, of course, it is a little bit advanced now, but the short story is the first chapter of the new book now. And this new book is a three-part novel, so the book is split into three parts and has 672 pages, if I'm, uh, if I'm correctly. It is... It looks like more than a thousand pages, but uh, most people have told me that the paper is very thin, right? Um, and he has also something interesting to tell regarding the writing of the story, which I will share with you just in a minute. But I've seen that we have some new comments. I would like to read them right now. So uh, let's go on in a few minutes. Actually not reading Murakami, enjoying lessons in chemistry by Bonnie Garmis. Nice. And Liz is reading, Komm, erzähl mir eine Geschichte. Okay, never heard of it. So I'd love to run past him in a marathon. Okay. 
Can you tell more about? Have you read the book? No, unfortunately not. Um, the thing is, I need to wait for the German release and we don't have a release yet. So uh, there's no release date. This is something really interesting. There's no release date for the English version, nor for French, Italian, Spanish, um, German. So all we know is the Japanese version. And unfortunately, I can't read Japanese. I'm sorry. Can you show pictures you got from the poster designer from your former vlog? Maybe later. Of course. One is already over there. Uh, Kafka on the Shore. Uh, designed by my dear friend Paul. Um, I don't know if everybody has watched the, the, the uh, last interview from last week. And when we are talking about Paul, he is just <laughs> typing the comment. Welcome to the chat, Paul. I hope you're doing good. Um, Paul has also sent me a new poster for Hardboiled Wonderland, which on my shame is still packed in my storage. But uh, later on, I will do a little break while you are watching a video and I will try to, uh, to, to fetch it. And this is a good idea, actually, so we can do a live unboxing because on my shame, I haven't unpacked it yet. So we can unpack it together and uh, watch the poster. Very good idea. Thank you for reminding me. So excited for the stream and absolutely loving it. Watching it from Gibraltar. Oh, nice. And excited to join other Murakami fans. Over the moon to hear about the new book. Very nice. I'm glad you like it. Thank you very much. Murakami is teaching at Wellesley College, Massachusetts, this semester. So, that's actually the news I got this morning. So, I, I remember it was uh, close to Boston, and Boston is in Massachusetts. So, that's, I think, the theory why uh, the fan thought that he might take part um, in the Boston Marathon. Ursula Grefe muss Gas geben. Yes, so for those who don't speak German, Ursula Grefe is the uh, German translator of the Murakami books. She is simply a legend on the German market, so every Murakami fan knows Ursula Grefe, every German Murakami fan knows Ursula Grefe. Um, yes. We are waiting for you, Ursula. Please do the translation as fast as you can. <laughs> but don't feel pushed by us. It's just a, a subtle hint. <laughs> um, also very interesting to note that uh, the Wind Up Bird Chronicle in Germany um, is out on the market since a very long time, since the 90s, of course. But it was not the full version because way back then it has been translated from US English into German and had 600 uh, pages only. So this was not the full book we could enjoy here. And in 2020, Ursula has finally translated the full book from Japanese to German directly and now it is over 1000 pages. So Ursula Grief is an absolute legend and we can't wait for a translation. I'm actually reading 1Q84 at the moment for the first time, but have read many other of his books. My two top favorites are The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle and Kafka on the Shore. Very nice. I read 1Q84 last year. Um, I'm not sure how, how far are you right now. So at what, at what chapter or page are you? I really enjoyed it. Um, still, I think it has some difficulties, especially the... Uh, female characteristics. I think the body parts are too extensive. Uh, we didn't need them that much, but um, overall it is a very exciting, moving story, very creative. Um, and I can absolutely understand that your favorites are the Wonder Bird Chronicle and Kafka on the Shore. Kafka on the Shore, I think will forever be my most favorite Murakami. I've booked tickets to Denmark in the Louisiana Literature Festival where he will attend. So excited. So lucky you. Lucky you. So you will get to see him live. Actually, the thing is, he is very difficult to catch. Because he uh, he doesn't have an actual homepage. So he has an English-speaking uh, uh, homepage, but this is run by the U.S. Publishers and not directly by him, so it is very close to the US releases. Um, I'm not sure if he had Twitter for a certain time, but of course Murakami is very shy. His interviews are very rare and it is quite difficult to fetch him. 
Do we know when the English translation for the new book is? Unfortunately not. I'm not sure. So I didn't get any news regarding that. So if anyone has news, please uh, leave them in the chat because currently I don't have any information. Not for English, not for German, not for French, Arabic, Turkish, nothing. I'm sorry. I'm glad to hear your comments on 1Q84, but already agree on your point regarding the main female character. Yeah, that, that's the main difficulty. That's the main difficulty. But overall, this was something uh, I just bought straight off because the story was so moving, so captivating, um, that I couldn't put the book aside and I was willing to accept that. And this is, I don't know, a double standard somehow. So I, I caught myself uh, that I threw over my principles because normally I, I'm one of one of those guys who just put the books aside if if this point is you know stressing me that much. But it's his narration style, simply. Yeah. Have you tried to contact him so far? Yes, I've tried actually. Uh, I've contacted uh, Shin Chosha Publishing, which is the Japanese publisher, and I thought this is maybe the quickest way. Uh, I've just sent them an email, but this was one try, and I'm one of those who tries once, and I don't want to bother anyone, because somehow I think I need to accept his privacy, and of course, this is just a small YouTube channel I'm running, it's nothing, and uh, I don't want to take, uh, you know, I'm not the kind of guy who, who uh, li likes to put himself too much in the center. So I, I will leave it w with this one try and uh, that's it. I'm not even sure if the mail has been forwarded. Maybe one day he will read it. Um, but of course, um, Haruki is Murakami. So Andy, he's the way he is. So I think P Sputnik Sweetheart is so underrated. Yeah. Same what I think. I really liked it. Um, Sputnik Sweetheart is always quite under the radar, but those that have read it really enjoy it and they always recommend it. Every time. Which book would you suggest to start with as a beginner reading his works? So I personally started with Killing Commendatore. Um, it was the perfect start for me because it was exactly the thing that I needed by the time because it somehow mirrored my own life at the moment, at that time. Um, if you are not familiar with this narration style, you should maybe start with a shorter book. If you like something with magical realism, then you should maybe start with but this is my own opinion only, um, 1Q84 or Kafka on the Shore. But Kafka on the Shore is very unique and it's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, and it is, as AG has said in the interview uh, last year, it is totally fine that it is not everyone's cup of tea. Um, I think we should be uh, somehow uh, careful to always recommend Kafka on the Shore because it has many riddles and as a Western audience we are used to get solutions for everything. Everything is explained in our world but this is not something Murakami does. He likes to keep questions open, he doesn't explain everything. Um, but if you're fine with this and if you can enjoy the story anyways, you can start with Kafka on the Shore because Kafka on the Shore is often the first book of new uh, Murakami readers. And I think you can't go wrong with it, so just go for it. 1Q84's Little People is one of the scariest villains I've seen before, especially towards the end when they randomly pop up. Yeah! Freaking creepy! <laughs> Imagine uh, you're just lying on the ground and some little people pop up, like... Yeah. I agree, Rayson. Sputnik Sweetheart is definitely underrated. I'm still very excited to finish 1Q84. Yeah. Love this channel, love this stream, and above all, love this guy. And I love you too, my dear friend. 
it was great to see you today. Thank you for supporting me. <laughs> That's great. 1Q84 is for sure top three. Yeah, it made it in my top three as well. I'm not surprised it's one of your top threes. I'm very excited to continue and finish 1Q84. Let me know afterwards, Polita, please, in the next stream. We will do them more often as before. Uh, this will come back on a, on a weekly, not, not on a weekly, but maybe uh, twice or three times a month. And let me know in the next times how you like the book. I think After Dark is a really good starting point. It's not too sexual and the vibes are peak Murakami. Yeah. And if you, if you are a very deep reader, please try the same what I did last year and read it in one single night. Because the book, the story itself is set in one single night in Tokyo. And I did this last year. So it has more than 200 pages. But if that is not too much for you, try it. Go for it. But don't feel stressed right now just because I recommend it. But uh, it, it really felt as if I was in Tokyo during that night. So it was really, really cool. I started with After Dark in English and decided to read in German. And now I have all of his books and I love them. Very nice. So what what seems uh, easier for you, Liz? Um, did you like it in English more or do you enjoy German more? Kafka is kind of going into the deep end. Yes. Every time you read it, every time you reread it, you discover something new. And yeah... It is one of those crazy books that will haunt me forever. Definitely. My first novel of him was After Dark. I still hold it as my favorite just because that made me fall in love with this narrative. Yes. But the, the very cool thing with After Dark is that it has a total different narration style from all of his other books. Because, uh, as I've told you before in one of my reviews, After Dark is written like a movie script. Straight like a movie script and from the Wii perspective. It's like just a moving camera observing all the characters. And um, I really enjoyed it. And you know what made me enjoy it even more? Is that After Dark is one of the more newer novels. When Murakami was a little bit older. And he has written a lot of books. And still he has the ability to change his narration style. And this is something that not every novelist can do. So he kind of reinvented himself. And this is something I really enjoyed. So the master has striked again. <laughs> yes, that is true. I read Kafka on the shore first. Very nice. Kafka is my favorite. Same here. How would you rank his books that you've read? Um, Raisin, I've, I've done uh, a top five video with my most favorite uh, uh, Murakami uh, books. One was Kafka on the Shore, two, 1Q84, and three is Killing Commendatore. Killing Commendatore has a special place because it was the first book of Murakami for me. Even if I objectively think that there are better books, it is on my third place because it has a personal meaning for me. Um, I'm not sure if, if you can share this. Maybe you have a certain book or movie that had a special impact on you. And even if it's objectively not better than something else, it is in your own mind something special for you. And that's the th thing with Killing Commendatore. Because as I told you before, it mirrored my personal situation. So I got out of a stressed situation, just as the narrator of the book. And... Um, it was just a perfect escape from something very difficult. Uh, a difficult job in, in, uh, uh, in my part, on my side. The German version. Okay. Yeah, same for me. I, uh, I tried some English books, but in the end, because German is the language I've, I've grown up with, it's just the best version I can read for myself. That is so true. Haunting is such a good word to use. Yeah. Are you planning to cover some other writers? Maybe in another channel. I would love to, but it is a lot of works. So uh, I've been thinking about it. I've also been thinking about doing a movie channel. Um, but I have decided to put that on this channel and do it as a special from time to time. So... 
I will from time to time recommend books that uh, are quite, let's say, similar in the narration style or in the themes for magical realism, for example. And um, this is something I will feature on this channel. Also, same for movies. I've, I've done some movie videos. So we have three movie videos so far. Um, the one is 10 movies that you should watch if you love Murakami. Part 1 and 2. So these are two already. And then I have another video which is called Watch This Film If You Love Murakami. Uh, it is a film called Tokyo from 2008. Um, there's also a, a video of this one. So this is something I will do from time to time. Um, but honestly, running another channel will be too much work for me. Um, and it would result into a quality loss on this channel. And this channel is my, even if it's very small, but still it's some kind of my baby and I don't want to leave it alone. So we, we will go on on this one. But uh, of course, I will also recommend other writers um, from time to time and also in the live streams I think have you seen the draft my car film from Murakami's short story it won an Oscar in 2021 I think yes um, I've, I've watched it and I simply loved it it is one of those movies you won't forget um, it is a three hour film uh, with a masterful camera work top notch actors um, simply amazing I really loved it and it deserved the Oscar definitely so if you have not uh, watched it right now you should check out the MUBI channel M-U-B-I MUBI is a sub channel on Amazon Prime and it has the, the film in its library and you can try MUBI for free for 7 days um, so just uh, uh, so just book it for 7 days and watch the film as often as you can within these seven days. <laughs> I really loved it. Such a cool movie. And not, not only cool, it is somehow melancholic, sad, but also very exciting. Even it is very slow paced. It has a very slow narration style. It's a slow burner. But um, you will stuck your eyes on it. Trust me, three hours. Three hours that feel like half an hour. And so many scenes that are so Murakami. So if you have read Murakami before... There is a scene when he enters the landscape. Trust me, you will remember my words when you watch the film. And you will say, okay, that's so typical Murakami. At the moment when he enters the landscape and uh, visits his new house. Simply, simply amazing. My second novel of his was The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Totally different from After Dog. That book will never leave my mind. It blew me away. Um, I'm reading it right now. And I had to do a little break, uh, unfortunately, because uh, at the time when I had the break, um, it was the point where I couldn't put it aside anymore. So, um, <sighs> the Wind Up Bird Chronicle feels special from the very beginning. I mean, there's only a guy cooking spaghetti and you're excited as F, right? And um, yeah. So, uh, Wanda Bird Chronicle, I guess, will make its way into my favorites, I think. Um, I will let you know when I've finished it. We will do a, a special video about it, because it is a huge novel, and you, can, you can't discuss it in one video only. So, yeah. This channel is keeping me mentally stable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad to read this. Thank you, thank you. Drive My Car is a wonderful movie. I love it. Yeah, definitely. Have you seen Portrait of a Lady on Fire? No, not yet. It's it's on my list since three years, I think. Everybody tells me to watch this film. Um, I won't push it too far. I will try to watch it until the end of the year, but the list is very long. Has anyone here read the original short story? Raisin has read it. Very nice. It's quite good, he says. Cool. Very cool. Um, let's go on with uh, with uh, the city and its uncertain walls. Uh, of course, I will react to every comment. So please just go on in the chat. Talk to the others. Um, share your night with them. Not only with me. I'm already very thankful that you share your free time with me. Because I know um, how much it is worth. And um, 
I appreciate it a lot, but don't focus too much on me. Just use the chat and talk to, to, uh, to the others on the chat. Um, so we were at the point where Murakami was talking about uh, his new book. And he said that he had the, the urge to, um, to, uh, to finish the story he has began 40 years ago. And he has started to write this book in 2020. And he says that this was the time when COVID began to hit the world. So when everyone was locked in. And um, he says that this had a huge impact on his writing. So he kept on writing and writing and writing and couldn't stop. So I will... I have an interview here, so uh, it's it's not only uh, it, it's an article on Fortune. I'm not sure if everyone everybody here knows uh, knows uh, the the page, but anyway, I will just straight read it for you um, because the very interesting thing here is that this book took him three years, almost three years to write it. Yeah, so. Because of the coronavirus, I hardly went out and stayed home most of the time, and I tended to look at my inner self. Then I thought, perhaps it's time to write that story, Murakami said. And he did, as if recovering it from the back of a drawer. He started writing it in January 2020 and finished in December 2022, years that overlapped with multiple earth-shattering events. When I write a novel... It just know it's time, he said. There were also Russia's war on Ukraine, shaken globalism and the Pandora's box of social media, Murakami noted. In an age when society is going through rattling changes, whether to stay holed up inside the wall or to go to the other side of the wall has become a greater proposition than ever, Murakami said in an interview ahead of the book release in Tokyo. Murakami wasn't in Japan when the book was released. He has been holding seminars about female protagonists, for those who re read 1Q84, uh, at Wellesley College, the women's school in Massachusetts once attended by former US presidential candidate Hillary Clinton and late Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. Initially, Murakami's intention was to re rewrite the 1980 story The City and Its Uncertain Walls to improve it, but the story didn't end there and Murakami kept writing. The version published in the Bungakukai literary magazine was rewritten, then became the first chapter of what turned into a three-part, 672-page novel. Right? So, this is basically what he has uh, told himself. And uh, there was also another uh, another interview. I'm not, I don't have it on the screen right now, but he said that um, the story began to unfold as long the longer he stayed at home due to COVID. And what I ask myself is, if COVID hasn't hasn't been there, would the book look the same? Of course, we can't find out right now because we need to read it and. You have to ask him yourself because his routine is to get up in the morning and write for four hours only. And that's it. And then he quits writing and just continues the other day because he has to go out running and to eat and, and so on. But this sounds to me that he has broken his routine for this book due to COVID because he wasn't allowed to go out a lot. So in three years. It took him three years to complete the book, which has 672 pages. And normally he is a bit quicker, I think. I'm not sure. But um, he says, the story began to unfold the longer I stayed at home. Uh, and of course, the story themes uh, itself is very much like Hardboard Wonderland and the End of the World but without the, the part of Hard Boy Wonderland and only the focus on the end of the world. So for those who don't have an idea what I am talking about right now, Hard Boy Wonderland and the End of the World is a book that he has released in 1984. And it is also set in 1984. So we have, uh, we have two narrations. So one storyline is set in Tokyo 
And the other storyline is uh, is set in a remote town, which is somehow medieval, but has some daily technology, right? So, um, and somehow these two storylines are connected. So it is a story where people have to get rid of their shadows. It is a story about dream readers that read uh, dreams of uh, of uh, of um, dead people, right? They read their memories, and they use their brains as a calculator. So um, by the time it was some sort of sci-fi thriller, and this time the city and its uncertain walls focuses on mo focuses more on the part of the end of the world, which is a very remote town. And this is a town that you enter and you have to get rid of your shadow. And the shadow is part of your body that keeps your memories alive. And once you give up your shadow, this results into something that you forget your memories and also your feelings. So this is the reason why I uh, had the urge to put the quote with the feelings at the beginning of the stream. So I'm not sure if everyone has hopped on from minute one to this stream. Um, there was a quote from Kafka on the shore I have uh, shown in, in the video at the beginning. Um, because somehow it is difficult for us to recall feelings from a certain time. Um, I personally connect my memories to feelings. So, I think most of us do. So, if we remember something that has happened in the past, we also remember the feeling because the memory wouldn't be the same without the feeling we had by that time. Let it be a good feeling or a bad feeling, right? So, a good feeling is something that uh, makes you remember this happening, whatever it was, in a good mood. And the bad feeling, maybe you were sad by the time, makes you remember that you don't want to relive this moment again, or maybe that you can use this moment to grow by it. Um, and this is a theme that Murakami tells very subtle in his books. So people giving up their shadows are often very, let's say, neutral, uh, emotionless, um, they are mostly happy with their life, but without the up and downs. And the thing is that you need to uh, that you need to consider at what time he has wrote Hardball Wonderland, which was in 1984, which was the time of the economic bubble in Japan when people were overworking um, when they went out to play arcade after work, uh, didn't sleep that much. And when the most important thing in your life was, in fact, your job. And this was the criticism he has hidden uh, in his book. And we all also need to consider that Murakami knows what work means. Because before he was a novelist, he worked. He had a jazz bar and was working at night. So uh, he needed to work to put the lunch on his table. right? Um, and... Mixing the stuff with the magical realism in his books is always a message for us not to lose our imaginations and the ability to dream, independent from how old we are. Um, every one of us can, can relate to the feeling, no matter how old we are. I'm 35 now. But everyone says, I would like to be a kid again. Why? Because we imagine so many things. And no matter how old you are, you are never too old to read Murakami. And Murakami himself is 74 years old and he writes stories with a lot of imagination and magical realism. And um, I think that's also why he had the urge to uh, recall the story and to finish it. Because it is something that popped up in his mind 40 years ago. You need to imagine this is 40 years ago and he is still haunted by the story and he has... The, the need to retell it, right? So there's some story which is following in his in his uh, brain for many years, and he wants to share it with us. So um, yeah, this is maybe uh, the reason why he has also done this interview because uh, this is something he doesn't do very often. Therefore, 
not because it's because it is his new most recent novel just because um i think he talks that much about it i think this could be something very special and now we are coming oh let let's let's just skip it for now we will do it later we will we will talk about what the japanese uh, fans have to tell about the book of course we won't do any spoilers that's fine for now but um Of course, we all want to know how the book is and what everyone thinks. But before we do so, let's just uh, go through a few comments because I've seen that there are some new comments. Um, and then we go on with the city and its uncertain walls. So let's see. Uh, please tell us your th thoughts once you have completed the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. We'll be excited to hear your opinions. Yes, I will definitely do. You can count on me. Uh, Still, I will need some weeks to finish it. And of course, I will uh, need to work on the translation of Red River. But um, I won't keep you waiting that long. So, Wind Up Bird is honestly by far my favorite. Yeah. Something that a lot of people share. Rossini, Thieving Magpie. That kitchen scene is iconic. Yes. And he's just cooking spaghetti. So there's just a guy cooking spaghetti and you want to know what's going on. That's, that's typical Murakami. And Paul, if you remember, uh, when, when I visited you, we talked about it. He makes simple things look so cool and easy. Cooking spaghetti is the start of the book. And yeah, very cool. Have you learned anything about the connections with Hard Boiled Wonderland? Isn't, it isn't a sequel, is it? So as far as I understand, it's uh, not a real sequel. It is quite a similar story because uh, he used um, the short story um, from the city and its uncertain walls as a pattern, I think, for Hard Boiled Wonderland. But as far as I understand from the Japanese reviewers, it is not in the same universe and has different characters. Maybe it is just uh, set before or after it, but officially he doesn't say anything about that. So. Um, I'm not sure if it is uh, a sequel. I'd like to call it... I'm, I don't want to lean myself out of the window that much, but um, if you have watched Quentin Tarantino's films, Django Unchained and The Hateful Eight, they are quite similar, but they are not connected to each other. So both are westerns and both are set in a quite similar time but they're not connected to each other so maybe it's just something like this hardboard wonderland is the most confusing of his i think yes it is it was at the beginning very confusing and i had very hard access on it so it took me around 200 pages until i said okay i like it um i think in my first review i've told you guys that I needed three attempts to finish the first 50 pages. Don't ask me why. It is written simply, but still very confusing. Don't ask me why. Please continue talking about the new book. Loving the live chat for this stream. Thank you. I'm happy to, to read that, actually. So we will go on just as we did uh, uh, in the past. Oh, it's already 50 minutes. The time flies with you guys. Really, thank you for being here. Oh, really, Hard Boiled Wonderland is good. Did Jay Rubin do a translation of it in the end? I heard it's one of his regrets working with Murakami. I'm not sure, actually, because I've read the German only. So um, maybe one of the English readers here can answer this question. What you are even saying now is very Murakami-esque. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he has an impact. On many of us, I think. So we, I think, uh, when we have read three or four books of him, we see things differently, uh, and we are still dreamers. Yes, it will require some time. Take all the time you need. Yeah. Funny thing is, one Q84 also had more than uh, 1,000 uh, pages. But this one took me only three weeks, I think, uh, because the story was so... I mean, 1Q84 is one of his most mainstream stories because it is told like a sci-fi action movie. Um, maybe that's the reason why I could read it that quickly. So it is very mainstream. And 
I think a lot of fans are screaming for a series or film of it. And I think it has the potential for it. And I love a simple bowl of spaghetti. Yes. <laughs> uh, did you have the same feeling when you've when you've reading the uh, spaghetti passage that you just wanted to uh, to cook some spaghetti? That comparison makes a lot of sense. Sense. Thank you. Hello, dear Sally. Hello, dear Ibrahim. Nice to see you again. I missed you. <laughs> hope you're doing good. I hope everything is fine. Thank you for blessing us all with this live stream. <laughs> Thank you for blessing me with your presence. So uh, it is more fun uh, if uh, people are here chatting with you. So thank you again. Are there any other writers you usually read and enjoy? Yes, actually, but um, I've left them in the last year. So uh, due to Murakami. But if you ask me um, who I can recommend, uh, one of those is a Turkish novelist. Um, but his books are available in every language because he's one of the most famous uh, novelists in Turkey. Orhan Pamuk. Um, O-R-H-A-N-P-A-M-U-K. Orhan Pamuk. Uh, very cool novelist. Uh, I love his books. Who else? Um, A.G. MacDonald. <laughs> Read A.G. MacDonald, because this is just perfectly for Harukists. Um, because he's influenced by him a lot, but he has a lot of creativity in his mind. And uh, yeah, Who else? Uh, normally I can talk about books for hours, but uh, I'm so in my Murakami tunnel since years now. Uh, I... Uh, I need I need to make a list for you. I think let's let's do a separate video about it because I don't want to forget anyone now. Um, then we can go on with it. And of course, uh, what was his name? Sorry, uh, Khaled Husseini, the author of uh, the Kite Runner. Very good, very good writer. But I haven't l uh, read his last novels now. Orhan Pamuk, his books are really good. Not easy to read. Yes, totally agree. You need you need time to read them. That's true. Not not really easy to read. That's true. Yeah. By the way, um, the chat recommends some authors to us. Let us know. Besides Murakami, what else do you read? What do you like? Let's use the chat to talk. Um... We will do a short break now, five minutes, but the break um, won't be uh, without any content. I will show you a video right now, which is part of my The Beauty of Haruki Murakami series. So The Beauty of Haruki Murakami is something I've started last year, just experimental. Um, in this video, I show you um, my imagination of a book in real life so these videos are always without text it's only music and images and it is not exactly things that are happening in the book that i am showing in the video but something that pops in my mind when i read the book so let it be the locations or the characters or the mood or the music i am imagining during this one um just something like a music video inspired by the book um, some are very accurate some are not very accurate not everybody can uh, share my thoughts on it um, sometimes i'm showing the characters in the video but it's not very fixated right so it is possible that you've seen the same character twice but played by another person because it changes in my mind from time to time um, so the videos are a combination of my own recordings I do I did in my holidays in the past years for example so landscapes but also a lot of stock footage so stock footage is something that you can download online and I've been researching a lot so um, what I'm showing you right now is a video called The Beauty of Kalalas Tsukuru Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage. 
So I'm not sure uh, if everyone here has read it. If not, I'm not spoiling anything because, of course, the video is without text, so it's only music. Um, but this is one of those uh, videos I myself enjoy the most and hasn't been watched that much. So maybe I can use this to reintroduce the video a little bit. Um, so um, I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the chat. Uh, I will continue reading the chat, of course. Um, let's watch the video together and I will be back in five minutes and we can also do... I will uh, fetch the poster of Paul of Hardball Wonderland. We will do the live unboxing together. And during that time, you can enjoy the video. I hope you will like it. But of course, if you need a break as well, feel free. You can leave for, for some minutes, no problem. And then we will go on with the live stream. Let me just, uh, let me just uh, put that thing on. And then I will see you again in a very few minutes. But at first, let me put this on. So, let's see. And then I will share my screen with you to see if everything works. So... a minute sometimes there we go uh, please let me know in the chat if you can see it can everybody see it just as a uh, short okay if everyone can see the the YouTube uh, window But I think you can see it, right? Should work. Okay, let's start the video and see you in five minutes. Hope you enjoy it.
Right. that's it that's it hope you enjoyed it um, thank you for your comments uh, Paulita anyone anybody notice the colors in the video a lot of red blue black and white yes um, there's also a reason behind it um, because if you remember the the characters had uh, always a color in their name and that's the reason I have put these colors in this one. So it's not 100% accurate, accurately the, the colors of the book, I think. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the main reason. And also because Tsukuru is colorless himself. So I wanted to have the contrast. So at the beginning you could see uh, Tsukuru remembering his past, um, which was quite not a lot of colors but with not too 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 bright colors and then we had um, in contrast to that the colors of the different characters and the looks of them that um, feel somehow disappointed by their friend um, and also at the end which is not part of the book but i had the feeling that uh, tsukuru as an old man will regret a lot of the th things he has done and um, that's why I've put the, the the old man in the end who is crying and regretting his past because I think there's a lot of grief and sorrow in this book and um, it also it's a perfect book for those who are just uh, passing the, the magical 30 in their life because that's the point where you build new friendships and leave a lot of old friendships behind. Um, and yeah, that's why I really like the book. It's somehow very melancholic, I think, but uh, it deals with a lot of problems that you have to cope with when you pass the magical 30. And um, yeah, th I think this is a very cool book that mirrors your life at this, at this uh, very important point in your life when you really become uh, an adult and start to grow. So thank you for your comments, really, really. It means a lot. Very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. I was surprised. What is Kafka, actor from your other video, doing there? <laughs> yeah, he is. So this guy is in a lot of uh, stock footage that really matches to the Murakami books. And when I was doing the Kafka on the Shore video, um, I thought that this is the guy, the perfect guy, because, yeah, he looks like a grown man, and Kafka is described as a 15-year-old who uh, works out a lot, but still he has a young touch, and I think he was great to to, uh, um, to portray him. 
even if he himself doesn't know that he is Kafka Tamura because he is just part of a stock footage I have made a, a film of. Uh, I'm not sure if he has seen it. I don't think so. <laughs> That's my Kafka Tamura, yes. And he also matches to the voice of my friend who has voiced Kafka Tamura. The best part of this book for me was the describing of Way Out of Depression. Yeah, I need to re read it. I think when I finished all the new stuff I got, I will read uh, Tsukuru Tazaki again. It's a cool book. And I think I've the last time I've read it was in 2018. Way too long ago. In my opinion, it's actually one of his most melancholic books. You make many good points. Thank you very much. Yeah, it is re really melancholic. Really, really, really. So the different uh, friends that, uh, you know, that uh, have... A lot of huge changes in their life and every one of them has a different direction they are going to and um, yeah it is I think uh, described perfectly and it's also, it, it was a very good decision to tell the story from the point of Tsukuru only and that not every character has his own chapter so it is told from the point of view of Tsukuru and this is the same way you uh, witness the lives of your beloved people, right? So when a friend of you uh, decides to, to marry his long-life girlfriend, you're not thinking from his per perspective, you're thinking of your own perspective. And this is very interesting. Um, I think that's... That's the way why many people like his, like this book, especially. A very good book in showing and describing the lifetime of friendships as well, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, very, very good uh, description. Yes. All right. Should we go on with the city and its uncertain walls? Are you guys ready? And then we do the life unboxing of Paul's poster. Paul, again, sorry that I haven't unpacked it now, but uh, we have been talking uh, and you know that many things have been going on. Shame on me, but uh, very soon it will hang on my wall. HM is over the magic 13th. I love that book. Yeah. The cool thing is when I read uh, Kalas Tsukuru Tazaki, back in 2018 um, is the year when I turned 30. Even if it's not described in the book, but I had the constant feeling that this just describes a, a very important part of everyone's life. You start to grow and, you know, some friendships grow deeper. Other friendships just go separate ways and then you see people again and then you remember maybe I wasn't fair enough to them in the past years. Maybe I did some mistakes why do they behave like this? Just a simple thing that everyone has in their daily life. When you see someone you know from the past, you just ask yourself, why is he not saying hello to me? Why is he not greeting, greeting me or something? And maybe there was just a, a short glimpse during school time where you have been harsh to them, unknowingly. Maybe you forgot that. But because it was not that important for you and you didn't want to be like this, but... Maybe this was something that had a huge impact on this person. So, I think a very good uh, mirror of our society nowadays. Okay, let's go on with the city and its uncertain walls. So, um, the people that have read the book and that I had the privilege to chat with told me that they think that this is a mix of the passages from the end of the world, from Hard Boiled Wonderland and the end of the world, and Norwegian Wood, a book we haven't talked about today until now. And Norwegian Wood is always uh, explained as some sort of teenage love story, even if I don't think that it is a simple teenage love story. But um, there are two main characters that share a romance in the city and its uncertain walls, and this is set in the end of the world passages. And, but they have told me that these passages are not too childish. They are somehow romantic. Um, some people had a little cringe because they th thought 
that an old man like Murakami writes a teenage romance again, but um, I don't know what the problem with this could be, because if you're a good storyteller, you can tell the story of characters at any age, so I don't see a problem with that. Um, but yeah, they told me that this is a mix of The End of the World and Norwegian Wood. Um, I like Norwegian Wood personally. Uh, it is still in my top five. Because, yes, it is a story with a very heavy tone, but it also has some very optimistic passages. And uh, I told in one of my former videos that I think that Norwegian Wood feels like you know that feeling when you are laughing while you are crying? That's how Norwegian Wood feels. So it is somehow bittersweet, but sad, depressing, but still has some funny passages. And you, you remember those funny passages. Um, so I'm really interested how this might turn out. So it is maybe it's just a simple love story. In a in an adventurous tale, I don't know. One Q eighty four has a, a similar theme, so we have two characters that uh, fall in love with each other, but um, that enjoy an adventure at the same time. I'm not sure. Um, we can also read some uh, Japanese reviews. I have saved them. Um, let me just open it up, and I will go through the most important of them. Let's see. By the way, uh, the city and its uncertain world starts with a with a quote at the beginning. So before the first chapter starts, there's a quote by Kublai Khan, I think. Let's see. Yes. So, um, when you open the book, there is a quote at the beginning. I can read it for you. And let's see if we can solve this riddle. Whereof the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man, down to a sunless sea. Samuel Taylor Coleridge in Kublai Khan. Does anyone of you know this? And has anyone of you a clue what he could mean with this hello just listening to what people told you already turns me a curious reader for the new book yes yeah they got me hooked on this one <laughs> very cool i always end up using the word bittersweet to describe murakami's books yeah it is it is bittersweet and in, in, in many books have this bittersweet feeling Exactly, yeah. I'm happy that we can share the same feeling. So let's go through a few reviews. So, yeah, this one got me, uh, I was really interested in this one. I will read it for you. Small letters on thin paper. For me, who was in my first year of college when the original story was announced, I learned about the original story a long time later. After that, I immersed myself in the original story from the outrageous world of the end of the world. So, he means uh, the end of the world passages from Hardboard Wonderland. The first part this time expands that worldview and constructs a world of walls. Walls have existed since time immemorial, so he means since endless times. That absolute fact stands in the way. In the second part, charming characters try to connect the two worlds. A well, so again we have a well just like in Hardboard Wonderland and Killing Combinatore, and a cellar in the library. After all, the world exists in various phases. Part 3 is read in a blink of an eye. In a sense, it will be an abrupt end. I'm not sure if that, if that was 
what was wanted though. Okay, but he rates uh, this book with four of five stars. And then, then we go on. Dream readings come up. The two worlds come out alternately and I read them while wondering if anything is too similar to Hardboiled Wonderland and the End of the World. There are also other morbid developments in the mentality of Norwegian wood and there is a strong sense of a deja vu. But it also feels like a series in a good sense. I don't think one pattern is bad and I feel that it's interesting enough like another story, like the movie version of Evangelion. Dead and living. That vague boundary and contact. And then survival. Okay, this is getting a little bit cryptic because it is translated from Japanese to English. Maybe this is a different appearance of Giovanni in Night on the Galactic Railroad. Also, it may be a place of separation of tastes, but I like the story of the city of the Fukushima prefecture better than the wall town story. Okay. The real thing is adorable. It's a long novel, but I feel like it could have been longer. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we have some more. Not the faintest idea. Yeah, me too. <laughs> About the quote. Yeah. Not at all. But I would use the quote to try and understand the book if that makes any sense. Yeah. I don't have any idea. The quotes Murakami uses always have that bit of misery and reality. I definitely agree. Murakami uses not only the examples of Japanese society, but also about other countries to show the globality of his writing. Yeah. Very cool. Cool comment, thank you. Um, I first thought when I read this, maybe he tries to explain the world the story is set in, but it would, this is too simple. I think there's a, a bigger, uh, bigger meaning behind it. So let's go on with some reviews here until we do the unboxing. Okay, that's cool. Five stars. If you don't finish reading, you won't be able to concentrate on anything else. So I read it all at once. Use your time outside of work. <laughs> I don't want to do any spoilers until I finish reading it. So I pre-ordered it. After all, I like paper books because they have weight. Yeah, me too. I won't write in detail because I don't want to spoil it, but I like my view of the world. Now that I've finished reading it, I lie down to get rid of my fatigue. Okay, so uh, this one finished the book in one read. 672 pages. Um, let's see, what is your record? What What is the most pages you have finished in... Uh, sorry, the most pages you have fin finished in one read. Let me know. I can tell you mine. Uh, the most pages that I have read in one shot were 420, I think. 10 years ago, when I had more time. <laughs> what I like on Murakami's books are the love stories that look true. Yeah, I think the same. Uh, and I don't... It's, so the, there are many people who say that he is not able to write love stories because they are too cringy. But honestly, I'm always uh, very excited to read those because I think he writes them very beautifully. I, I like them. In 1Q84, Norwegian Wood, have Sputnik Sweetheart. I think they're always very poetic and melancholic. I love it. I simply love it. So far, the reviews are very interesting. Yeah, and just as the book itself, they are very cryptic. They don't want to tell that much, but uh, yeah. Okay, this one is cool. It's titled, I'm glad I was able to read it. When I was a college student, I started reading works by Haruki Murakami after being furiously recommended by my classmates. From an adventure involving sheep, I went back in and went back down to the Norwegian wood. Even when my fever had cooled down and I was away for a while, I read it from time to time, mainly to take it with me on trips and business trips. Sometimes it also served as a study and dabbled in several foreign language versions of works. 
When Drive My Car won an Academy Award, I unintentionally bought a short story containing the original electronic version. So he's talking about men without uh, women. Murakami's work, Murakami's latest work, over 600 pages and a price close to 3,000 yen. By the way, I've compared the prices. So in US dollars, um, I didn't check the euros, but I think, uh, but I think um, US dollars is the thing we can all relate to the most. Um, if you calculate the price of the book um, in US dollars, it is $22 which is quite okay, I think. Because normally if a Murakami novel or a bigger novel is released in Germany, for example, we pay around 30 euros. Also 35 euros, sometimes 40 euros. But also it is, in de it is dependent from the cover, from the cover art. And um, the covers here in Germany, for example, are very beautiful. I can... Let me show you one. I'm just opening up my... Uh, my shelf over here, just a second. So that's the cover of Killing Commendatore Part 2. So in Germany it has been released in, in two parts by Dumont. Here you can see it. And that's actually the cover, which is very beautiful. And you can also open this part up. And then you have only the landscape. Let's close it. You got the letters on it. So this is how a new Murakami book looks in Germany. That's it. Yeah. So this was also quite expensive, but worth every every cent because uh, I think somehow we should appreciate the the work of the designers. Yeah. Let me just put it aside before I stand up again. They are not cringy at all. I agree on your points regarding Murakami's love stories. Yep. Thanks. Cryptic is the word to use. <laughs> yeah. I read Crime and Punishment in two days. Just stopped for Aleppo. Okay. Two days is very good. Very, very good. Dumont. Yes. Dumont has so beautiful covers. And it feels like uh, the books, you can just put it on your coffee table. And it looks amazing. Love that book cover. Yeah. About a reading stint. Finished Crime and Punishment in two days with a few hours sleep. Yeah. Very cool. So two days is a very, very good performance. Definitely. So I, uh, I'm sorry. I just uh, interrupted this review. So he was talking about the price. So, uh, over 600 pages and a price close to 3,000 yen, which was quite a hurdle, but I dared to poke around on Amazon and read it in two days. The drawing, which made me read this long story in two days, made me feel once again amazing. There are probably various opinions that the typeface has changed from before and that it is light, but as a fan, I'm very satisfied. Is this a continuation? Okay, that's that's a cool question. Is this a continuation of uh, Hardboiled Wonderland and the End of the World? There's also a voice saying, but I haven't read the, the same book, but there were no problems. In the first place, Haruki's work itself is quite out of line with so-called common novels. And it's shocking when someone who doesn't know that style reads it. And I don't like Murakami other than a novelist, for example, who talks smoothly on the radio. Okay. I think there are really individual likes and dislikes, but it was really nice to be able to read this work as the latest work delivered by writer Murakami. Okay. Okay, we, we will read this one at the last and then we go on. We will also watch a video about uh, this new book, but uh, let, let me just read this. I've only read one chapter yet. Frankly speaking, I have the impression that it's an updated version of the story spun in my work so far. Nonetheless, I can't help but be amazed by the author's consistent attitude of sincerely trying to, re to replace nonverbal things with language. 
Also, as the person himself professes to improve his skills, it is clear that his expressive power has become more precise. This work has a wall theme. The front and back of a person, consciousness and unconsciousness. I think he's talking about the shadow. The other side and this side of the world. How should we act or how should we stop in that fight? Poetic, suggestive, mythical and religious. Okay, very cool, very, very cool. Let me know what you think after hearing those reviews. Of course, there, the language sounds a bit strange because we have been translating them uh, from, from Japanese now. Um, but uh, but I think we can, it is quite, it, it's nice so we can have a, a short impression of, uh, of what might be uh, expecting us. And then we will watch one last video. Um, I'm just looking for it um, because they have been filming some fans who uh, who got uh, who uh, bought the book on day one. I think it's very interesting to watch this. Uh, it's a short video from the news, from Asian News, and then we will do the live unboxing, and then I think uh, we can come to a smooth end. But of course. We can keep the chat running for a few minutes before we uh, before we say good night. But for now, let's uh, let's watch the video. That's funny. Murakami fans celebrate release of the new book. I'm gonna put my headphones on and then just watch it. Mit Miro kannst du dein Team so richtig zeigen und nicht nur erklären. Miro ist ein kollaboratives Board. Ein Very bad quality. By the way, that's uh, that's the cover. I, I guess most of you have seen it and I've also shared it in the thumbnail, but yeah. That's the cover of uh, the city and its uncertain walls. Um, I don't think that the US version or the German version or any other version will have the same cover because it has always been different. Of course, depending on uh, on the publishing house. I'm a little bit disappointed, uh, frankly speaking, because um, if a star like Rihanna or uh, Jay-Z releases new sneakers, the No, that this doesn't work. So many teenagers waiting in front of stores. They, uh, you know, waiting for new sneakers the whole night. And here we have, I think, <laughs> five grown men only. But okay, maybe this is just a small bookstore.年ぶりの新作ということで、またちょっとこのコロナの中で駆け始めた新作ということでもすごく楽しみにしてきました。えっと、僕も好きな世界の割とハードボイルドワンダーランドのその似たようなものというか、あの過去の中編 what I think um, is very interesting is that um, the Japanese version also features uh, an English title on the cover itself. Um, so it means that Murakami himself has given the book this English title. So I think in most cases all of his books only had a Japanese title. Uh, and. Um, this time he decided to, to put an uh, English title as well. It must come from him. I don't think that this is a decision of Shin Chosha, the publishing house. 
その村上さん自身が、まあ、やり残したことという言い方だったかどうかそのうまく書けなかったものをもう一度書き直してみたかったというようなことをおっしゃってたので、まあ、読み比べられたら本当にいいなとは思いますよね。その40年前だったかな40年前に書いた、えー、まだ未熟とは言わないかもしれませんけども、えー、ただ作品とどこがどう変わったのかというのはぜひ読み比べてみたいなと思いますよね。By the way, this bookstore is very famous in Japan.、Um, Kinokuniya.、Um, I think there are several branches in Japan. But、um, if you just、uh, go on Instagram, for example, and look for the Murakami hashtag, most of the pictures、uh, are tagged in this bookstore. So, this is the Corona Cut. And that's how it looks. So, 672 pages on very thin paper. I can't wait to hold it in my own hands. I also love the fact how the clients just uh, re- uh, with a lot of respect.、Uh, Just not before they take the book because it feels like this is a. Of course, it is very com- common in Japan, but I think、um, it is a very cool, very cool meaning behind it that before he grabs the book, check it out, be- before he grabs the book, he does the respectful knot. Look at it. I, so, something we can.、Uh, We can take it as an example for our own life. It pays respect to,、uh, to the people working there. It pays respect to the book itself. It pays respect to the author. And、uh, I'm sorry, it pays respect to literature. Beautiful thing. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Let's see. There's another video that has subs of people buying the book on day one. Yeah, I think I've seen this,、um, but I don't have it right now. Maybe we'll find it later. I've heard that he writes his books in English and Japanese in parallel. Has anyone else heard this? I heard that、uh, he has been translating、um, books, but I'm not sure if he does it with his own books.、Um, as far as I know, he simply writes his book. Puts it on a USB stick, very old school, and gives it out to his publisher and says, This is my new book, go for it. And that's it. This is the version I know.、Um, I'm not sure, maybe. Peter Spick. Must be a novelist. I'm, I'm not sure. I never heard of that. Really interesting thing to mention. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yes, you're right. Beautiful gesture of that man. Yes, I think as well. All right, so let's do the unboxing. I don't want to. I think it's, it's quite late now.、Uh, we, of course, we can、uh, go on for hours, but、uh, let's do the unboxing.、Uh, I've teased this already one hour ago. So that's the beautiful box that、uh, Paul from Blickgestalt has、uh, provided me. So for those who, don't, who only、uh, heard me talking about Paul, So, Paul is the founder of a shop called Blickgestalt, right? Blickgestalt is an Etsy shop and you can purchase from any cr- corner of the world. And Blickgestalt sells very amazing Murakami wall arts, right? So,、um, these are pictures you can hang on your wall. And、um, I've already got one, the Kafka on the Shore over there. And In last week's video, if you go on my channel, Paul has provided a v o u c h e r code, a promotional code for every、uh, viewer of my channel, right? So you get 10% off, right? Just watch the video afterwards. We watch the unboxing now. I think it is very important. But、uh, watch the video later and use the promotional code to purchase one of, or maybe all, 
of uh, Paul's artworks and hang Murakami on your wall. So he has artworks for Kafka on the Shore, 1Q84, um, Killing Commendatore, Hardboiled Wonderland, which I'm going to unpack now. I'm not sure if it was Hardboiled Wonderland or Killing Commendatore. Uh, we will see now. I don't remember it because it is some weeks ago already. Um, I think he also has one for Dance, Dance, Dance. I'm not sure right now, but uh, um, please type... Blickgestalt into Google, you can watch my last video, there's also a link to the Etsy shop and check out his wall art. So the quality is simply amazing, he uses very good paper, it is not something like a, like a cheap eBay shop or something, it is really cool wall art in a very good quality, uh, on very good paper and the design is simply amazing, I love it. So, Paul, let's see what you have packed for me here. Go. I'm so excited right now. And you can see that this is packed very carefully, right? So it is not anything cheap. Of course, it is not uh, with a frame. I'm not sure if you can purchase with a frame on Etsy. I just bought this frame from uh, IKEA. Um, it looks perfect in any living room or in your reading corner. So, if you want to appreciate Murakami, go to Blickgestalt and purchase it. Very cool stuff. And of course, by a very cool guy. Alright, so this was uh, the cover for the poster. So, it is packed very safely. And here we go. I think I will need to step back a little bit. Look at this amazing piece. Hard Boiled Wonderland. And I've decided for this one because it looks like a real movie poster. Very cool. Just like a movie from the 80s, a Japanese movie from the 80s. Hard Boiled Wonderland and the end of the world. Look at this parallel. So you got the end of the world on the top, the winter wonderland, the winter landscape. And then you got uh, on the opposite, the guy from the 80s. And then you got the cool lettering here. Very cool. Thank you, Paul, again. Thank you again. And uh, on the bottom, he has... Uh, he has quoted some uh, some characters, just like like uh, in a movie. So what we got here, starring the narrator and his shadow, with the scientist, the obese girl, the librarian, the gatekeeper, the colonel, the caretaker, Junior and Big Boy. <laughs> you remember Junior and Big Boy? Unicorns. The quality of the poster and everything looks very good. I definitely have to think about purchasing one of these posters. posters. Yeah, definitely. So it's definitely amazing. So once again, I put this up. You can memorize it. And then please, when we end the stream, go on the video. It is the one that I've uploaded last week. And give Blickgestalt a like. And you also, please follow him on Instagram. He has a very cool Instagram page. And you get daily updates. Not daily updates, but you get updates from time to time. Um, and he, besides Murakami, he has some other projects, not only Murakami, he also has covers for David Mitchell books, but I think there's also uh, a find balance, um, find balance uh, collection for, you know, for relaxing stuff. I'm not sure if, if Paul is still on the chat right now. Paul, if you are on the chat, maybe you can just uh, give us a short hint of with what other books you have on, uh, on Etsy. And then please drop in your visit. And also, if you have purchased one of his posters, feel free to to uh, to post this on Instagram with a selfie or something. You will be very happy. And let's just spread this posters among all Harukists because we definitely need uh, more on the wall. Definitely. Right. That's about Blickgestalt. 
So before we end the stream, let's stay a little bit in the chat because uh, we are very active today. Thank you very much. I didn't expect that many uh, people in the chat. Uh, um, we will do a live stream again very soon. So uh, we won't waste too many time because there are many things we need to talk about. Um, for example, the new movie that has come out in cinemas, Blind Willow Sleeping Woman, the animation film. Um, I think it is important to know that the film is not based on the book Blind Willow Sleeping Woman only because the the uh, the stories inside that are not only from the book. So there's also Super Frog Saves Tokyo, for example. And um, it is not out here in Germany. I think it's out in the US, in the UK and in France and some other countries. I'm not sure if anyone here in the chat has already watched it. Uh, only thing I could do was I had the privilege to talk to the director of this of the film, Pierre Feldes. So you can also watch the interview with him. Um, has been uploaded in the beginning of February. You will find it on my channel. Um, and um, this is something uh, we will cover. So I hope I can watch the the movie soon, so we can talk about it. Um, what else do we got on the schedule? I will release a short film, a Haruki Murakami short film, um, latest by winter this year. Um, so I will, um, I will do a film for a short story. Um, First Person Singular is a short story collection um, which has been released in 2021. And there is a story called um, Charlie Parker Plays Bossa Nova. And this is the story I will do a short film of. So the script is written. I will do a casting with actors and uh, will share the news on the channel as well. So um, I will take you into the process of the making of this film. And then I think you will be able to watch this film free on YouTube, of course. Uh, this is nothing that you need to pay for or something. All will be available for free. Um, and then you can, I think, watch it latest December this year. We are also doing, uh, so we are currently in talks with other Murakami fans and, in my opinion, Murakami experts from all over the world. Uh, we are currently... Um, planning a podcast series which is not part of my own podcast I will release it on this channel but it is not part of the podcast I'm already doing this is a, a limited podcast series um, where we will talk about Murakami themed films so we will release several episodes and we will talk about directors who have already shot Murakami films for example, Ryusuke Hamaguchi, who has directed, uh, who has directed um, Drive My Car, and we will explore his other works. Um, we will explain it later. So this will be a discussion round with with some people, with some bloggers and Murakami experts from different parts of the world, and uh, I think this will be very cool and exciting. But we will, of course, need some time to record this because we will do several sessions and then we, you will be able to uh, to be uh, watch it here on YouTube. Of course, also for free. Everything will be for free, right? Um, what else do we get? Um, another vi video will come with 10 movies that you should watch if you love Murakami. So part three, we already have two parts. Uh, what else do we get? Uh, of course, the Wonder Bird Chronicle will be the next review. And many more things. Um, another live stream will be, will be live reaction. So we will watch some movie scenes together that are from Murakami's films. We did that in the last stream, but only a very short time. So we will do a whole live stream only about Murakami films. So not a podcast, but a live stream. So everyone can take part, right? And of course, you can also take part. Um, you will have the possibility to join my Discord server and then talk through microphone or video or everything that you prefer. Now let's go through the comments again. The live stream and the live chat has been amazing. Thank you. I hope that all 
of you have enjoyed it. Next stream maybe about the hidden connections. Of course, Paul, for you. Only for, and you will, I think, uh, if you have time, you are free to join. Not only through chat, but through video. It, of course, only if you want, but you are gladly invited. <laughs> I love your work, Sally. This work is pure gold. Thank you very much, Walter Jr. Thank you. Oh, yes, to the next live stream. When will it be? I do not want to seem pushy or impatient. I have just loved this live stream. <laughs> Thank you, Paulita. It's not pushy because I, on my half, I also can't wait for the next live stream. It's always a question of time, you know. And the thing is, uh, we also need to match the different time zones because um, just as an example, in the US, it is still afternoon right now and people are at work and can't join. And of course, I also want to invite people from, from Asia, from Japan, for example, which is seven hours ahead. Um, so we'll always mix the time zones. We'll try different time zones. Uh, for me, Friday evenings works best. Uh, we'll see. I will announce it uh, very soon. But I think um, the next live stream won't be too far away. Maybe next week. Maybe the week after. We will see. We will see. Wow, the short film. Good luck and looking forward to it. Thank you very much. It will be a huge undertaking. I'm very nervous right now, but uh, uh, we have many talented people working on it. Uh, cool soundtrack, cool designs. will be very cool. I have been dying for a Murakami podcast. Very exciting to hear. Uh, actually, there's already existing. So I already have a Murakami podcast, which is a video podcast. I'm not sure if you have seen it. So, so far we have three episodes. Um... Just go on my channel and look for the playlist, which is called Convo on the Shore. So, Conversation on the Shore. Um, there we already have three episodes. The last episode was the one with, with Paul. And then, of course, uh, in addition to that, we will have the movie podcast with the other uh, booktubers and bloggers. So many exciting things in the works. Extremely excited and looking forward to it. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. I'm also excited as well, and I'm happy that you can join the journey. Of course, time zones are something very important to consider. Yes, that's the thing. Um, but anyway, any time where I can talk to people like you is always very beautiful. I really appreciate your time, that you are sharing it with me. And uh, just simply thankful that we got the internet now, because in the past this wasn't possible. Um, so, very cool. I have not seen it. Thank you very much for mentioning it. I'm definitely going to have a look. Yes, please. Please do so. Hope you will enjoy it. Uh, you can also use the comment section below the videos. So, for example, the last episode with Paul, I enjoyed a lot. We had a great time. Um, the, the, the video in full is around one hour, but uh, we could go on for hours. So, uh, talking to other Murakami fans is just uh, a pure joy. Um, so we'll see what the next episode will bring uh, it will come in May um, so we will have different guests and sometimes it's just me talking in front of the camera sometimes it will be uh, with friends who have read Murakami or who also haven't read Murakami for example the first episode is with a friend who hasn't read Murakami who doesn't know Murakami, uh, who only took part in the documentary I've been doing, uh, but he hasn't read Kafka on the Shore or any other book, but it also opens uh, a very interesting perspective to talk to someone who hasn't read him yet, so it's also very cool. Um, we will have guests uh, that are somehow related to Murakami, people that have been working with him or that have done a movie. For example, uh, the interview with Pierre Földes, episode 2. That was very interesting because he has made a movie uh, which is hitting theaters. And of course, the one with Paul. Not not that many episodes. I don't want to flex or something. It's only three episodes so far, but yeah. All right. I think we almost got two hours. Um, I really enjoyed it. I hope you have enjoyed it as well. Thank you very much again for hopping on the chat and for keeping the stream alive the whole time. Uh, really appreciate it. And I am happy to see you the next time. Um, enjoy the weekend. 
to all the Muslim viewers, happy Eid, Eid Mubarak, uh, have a wonderful feast. And for all others, take good care of yourself, never stop reading, enjoy Murakami, enjoy good health, and hope to see you next time on the live stream. Thank you again for being here. Good night to everyone, and until then, have a very good time. Bye-bye.